I'm, I'm John Doyle. I run and founded Juniper Wealth Management. We're a financial planning firm based in Lancashire and Preston, uh, serving clients all over the country, uh, particularly targeted towards business owners, entrepreneurs, but then also doctors, dentists, vets as well. Excellent. Hi, John. Thanks for jumping on with us today. Delighted to, to have you. Uh, now you've been working with us uh, now at six, seven, eight months, that kind of kind of time. Um, so I'd like to kind of drill into maybe what was happening in your business when you were sort of thinking about coming on board. You know, what things were you, you kind of struggling with from a marketing and a, and a promotion point of view? So if, if I think back 12 months, you know, we're right at the start of COVID. And mm -hmm. um, as, a, as a practice, we've always uh, sourced our, our business from sort of traditional sources for financial advisors accountants, networking, existing mm -hmm. clients, those sort of things. Um, and I've always known that as a business, we needed a marketing system that's scalable and repeatable. Um, mm -hmm. And particularly as like COVID was happening and inquiries dropped off a cliff, I was looking for someone or some way of doing that. I knew LinkedIn was the thing. And that's mm -hmm. when I came across you guys at Thompson Consulting. Now, if I remember correctly, you had already kind of dabbled a bit with LinkedIn and, and, and you'd like, I, I would describe you as quite an entrepreneurial advisor because, you know, you, you do kind of look at these things, you, you know, you do have a, an interest in marketing and content creation and you do kind of get stuck in. So you've yeah. kind of tested or done some stuff your, yourselves, you know, even prior to speaking to us. Is, is that right? Yeah, yeah, I've, I've, I've dabbled with things. Now, the problem with being an entrepreneurial financial advisor is you tend to dabble with things rather mm -hmm. than specializing in things. Um, right. So I knew that there was something in this, but I, I didn't quite have the knowledge and the time to uh, execute it perfectly, yeah. Mm. And how was the process of coming on board with us at the time, do you remember? We're, we're, I slept quite a lot since then, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, from what I remember, which is a good thing, because if I remembered it, that means there were problems. Um, I remember yeah, yeah. it being fairly, fairly seamless. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, we had our onboarding call and then there was, you know, the team setting up the campaign and, and going through my profile and um, those sort of bits. But, uh, yeah, I remember it being, being pretty straightforward. And I remember we had some fairly detailed conversations around, you know, who you should be speaking to. Because I think at the time you, there was probably a, a number of different kind of uh, – uh, different groups you were kind of targeting, if if I if I remember correctly, and and do do you remember how we kind of whittled that down? Do, do you remember? The, I remember we did we we went through it a little, uh, in a, in a fair bit of detail there before we got started. Didn't we? Yeah, uh, so we, uh, um, I think I think we just we we just had the the, the call uh, to really drill down into who I was looking to speak to, why mm -hmm. their pain points that they were going mm -hmm. through. Um, and that's when we drilled down on, on the niche of working with the doctors, dentists, and vets that is, is one area of what we do as a business mm -hmm. um, because it's something that we can really target quite nicely on LinkedIn with specific messaging and, and, and articles and stuff. The interesting thing was, of course, targeting doctors and, and, and dentists and vets and so on in the middle of a pandemic was always going to be a, a, an interesting yeah. play. You know, obviously the doctors are kind of busy. You know, there's a pandemic uh, going yeah. on. How, how, did, how did that go? Um, interestingly, and it, it definitely had um, peaks and troughs with it. Mm -hmm. um, so particularly early days, we, we decided to go with dentists more than doctors. Um, mm -hmm. But the uh, dentists were kind of um, head in the sand, all a bit of a tiz at that point. Real mm -hmm. pain for dentists, um, COVID, the you know, practices closed down, and then they were trying to work on getting up and going. Um, so then we sort of pivoted more towards doctors, Mm -hmm. And um, from probably August through till Christmas, that was working really effectively. Um, mm -hmm. And since Christmas, every uh, medical client of mine has just been involved in vaccine rollout. I've got a few clients, <laughs> some of them from the, the campaign that we've run, who are quite pivotal in running and managing yeah. the vaccine rollout in the area. So. Yeah. Um, Maybe they've gone a little bit quiet again. <laughs> <laughs> it was interesting, though, as you say, we did go initially uh, quite heavily into the dentists, but I, I think we found out quite quickly with the data that the dentists had been hit pretty hard by the, mm. by the, by the, by by COVID, and a lot of them were in pretty bad shape overall, uh, as far as, as far as I could tell. As you say, we pivoted back towards the the doctors and consultants, and and. Uh, 
I, I think I was surprised by the response we got from the doctors and consultants. I was expecting it to be the other way around. I thought yeah. the dentists would be stronger, but that wasn't the case at all. And the doctors and consultants actually responded much more strongly. Well, which I thought that's was, one of my was big really learning interesting. points. Mm. That's one of my big learning points, I think, from this process is pivoting in the market and, and really listening to the data that's going on and the feedback you're getting. Um, because, yeah, I, I probably wouldn't have, have done that if, if I hadn't been part of that process. Yeah. <laughs> the data never lies is always what, what I, the way I look at it, you know. We're, we're all emotional creatures, so we make emotional decisions, but the data doesn't, doesn't ever lie. So how did the campaign go overall from a, you know, a client acquisition point of view, you know, calls, leads, and, 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 and so on, you know, in terms of the, the practicalities of it? Yeah, um, I, I was genuinely pleasantly surprised by the, the number of um, responses we were getting to the, um, the campaign and the leads that were being generated, which then led into the sort of discovery calls and clients. Um, mm -hmm. Now, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say that we had hundreds of clients come on board of because, yeah. you know, um, <laughs> but what I would say is we probably have between eight and 10 who are onboarded. Others are still in, in progress. Um, yeah. Uh, but all of those clients are perfect, ideal clients for us as a business. Mm -hmm. um, they fit right into our client avatars that we've, we've mm -hmm. come up with. Um, and and, and so, so I would term it a very definite success. <laughs> Right. Yeah. No, I, I, absolutely. I, I think that targeting really is the key, isn't it? And that's mm. why we spent so much time on that initially, because as you say, when you can put the right message in front of the right, the right person, and you know, yeah. you're, you then onboard them, you, you, you get a higher quality client. It's as simple as that. And, and therefore you have a better relationship and you retain them longer and it, it works better uh, overall. Do you know what those eight to 10 clients are worth to you in terms of year one revenue in your business, gross revenue approximately? Yeah, so we're obviously still in that first year with a lot of them, but um, typically, if we call it nine clients, it'd be about 45,000 in terms about of 45, new, new, new business. About 5K per client, and that's year one revenue, obviously. Not, yeah, not, yeah, 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 that's not all trails or, or, like yeah. or anything like that. And do you have any idea from an asset management point of view what, what you'd be talking approximately from those from those uh, eight to ten clients? Um, I've, I've not got those numbers, I'm afraid, but, it, you know, Certainly over a million, maybe you know, maybe even over two million, but somewhere yeah. that sort of one point eight to two point five million, um, depending. And a lot of those clients, they're big savers because they're in that accumulation phase, so mm -hmm. they're very, very rapidly uh, saving money with us. Yeah. Excellent, which which is exactly what you want them to do, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I, I, absolutely. And if uh, if another advisor was sort of thinking about, you know, getting involved in, in LinkedIn lead generation or, you know, working with us or, or our programs, mm -hmm. what, would, what would you say to them? I'd say as a, as a platform, LinkedIn is the perfect platform for financial advisors. Um, okay. You know, it, people are in a, in a business mind frame when they're on it, um, and just learning it in general is a really important uh, thing. If you're wanting them to take that from just playing to actually understanding more about what's going on with LinkedIn and how to sort of more targeted, uh, then, then going through and working with yourselves is what has transformed our approach to LinkedIn as a business. Mm -hmm. yeah. And do you think there's there's anything you did on your end which drove some of the success of the campaign? You guys were quite hands on. You've obviously got a team, and, and you kind of you, you kept on top of the leads as they were coming through. Is is that is that something you would recommend to other people as well? Well, of course. I mean, it, it's no there's no point generating lots of leads if they're just going to sit somewhere in an inbox doing nothing. <laughs> you, you kind of have to do the work. Um, and you know, again, particularly with our the, the clients we were targeting. Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't like they didn't have other distractions going on that were more important than, you know, their pension or their life insurance or whatever it is that we were specifically talking to them about or the financial plan, which always gets yeah. kicked down the list. Yeah. Um, so that, um, that follow up, that process of, of managing mm -hmm. those leads through to, to bring them on board is, is really important. Mm. And you guys do work with other channels from a marketing point of view, don't you? I mean, I, I know you've, you've got kind of different lines in the water, so to speak, that you kind of you kind of work yeah. with. How would you compare LinkedIn overall as a channel to some of the other channels that you've tested? Um, for me, it's as a particularly in terms of online, we, we've not got anything better at the moment. Um, right. We're working on the other streams because I think they're important for social proof and, and they will have opportunities, but LinkedIn is, is the place that um, we, yeah, we're, we're speaking to our clients. And you're also someone who, you know, 
puts a lot of store in, in content as well, you know, in producing content for your business, both uh, articles and videos, and, and you put a fair bit of time and effort into that side of things. What would you say to advisors that are maybe a little bit nervous about putting content out there or, or don't want to show yeah. their face on video or are worried about, you know, the implications of the compliance department when it comes to content? What would you say to an advisor kind of th- sort of thinking about that? Well, uh, the first thing is just do it. Um, you know, the great thing with a lot of these platforms is, you know, content is easily forgotten. So <laughs> bad, bad, bad content on LinkedIn will be, will be forgotten in a few weeks. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Um, I've actually now got to the point where we've taken on a marketing apprentice to help mm-hmm. us extrapolate the content we're creating uh, into other platforms. Um, you know, it's a, attention is everything, as Gary V says. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we've we've got to we've got to be out there speaking to our clients because, particularly at the moment, there's so much trash advice on TikTok, on LinkedIn about all sorts of nonsense. That as advisors of the advice community, I think we've got an obligation to be there, mm-hmm. telling people mm-hmm. what good advice looks like, what good planning mm-hmm. is. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, so get out there, get get doing it. <laughs> and you've kind of really embraced video haven't you and that's something you're kind of getting stuck into I, I seem to remember when we spoke maybe a year or so ago that video maybe wasn't that high on your agenda but I think you've, you've got a bit more into yeah. it is that, is that fair to say I'm still not I'm still not a natural <laughs> pool um it's you know it's funny like literally before this call I was you know we we're filming something with um Chanel Wokantis and um She's like, you just need to relax a bit more into it and talk, talk normally. So it's still something that I'm getting used to, but I know it's important. And I know that mm-hmm. um, we, we need financial advisors out there on video spreading the message. So who, who better than me? Well, well, why do you think video is important? I mean, I, I, let me just drill into that a little bit. I, I mean, I agree. I, I really think video is important. We do a huge amount of video for our business. I'm, I'm a really mm-hmm. big, big fan. But as an advisor, why do you think video is important? Um, well, actually, I think the most important part of it is the audio side of it mm. because um, and people consume content differently now. So, number one, with video on LinkedIn, um, you know, one of the things we're starting to do now is, is put the subtitles on because people are scrolling through while they're doing other stuff. And right. so they can, they're reading what, what you're doing. Um, and then the, the audio side of it is, you know, people – they're consuming content when they're going places, when they're doing other stuff. Um, right. And if you, if you send someone an article that takes 10 minutes to read, that's effort. You know, that, that really requires someone's effort to go and consume mm-hmm. that content. A video with, with good audio um, doesn't really matter about the video quality. The audio mm-hmm. is really important because they can consume that while they're doing the washing up. They can consume that over their morning coffee. They can consume that. You know, even on the drive to work, if they're just listening mm-hmm. to to something. Um, so I think it's it's really important. Excellent. And look, I, I, I really commend you. I, I'm forever telling advisors to embrace the content, to do more articles, and do more video. So it's great to see you doing that and knowing how important it is so i'm I'm delighted to uh to 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 see that all right finally uh, and obviously thanks for your time so we really we really appreciate it finally you know if someone was on the fence uh about working with ourselves or engaging in in our in our programs um what would you say to them it it works i mean you don't need as a financial advisor you don't need many clients to to get the value from what you do you know Mm -hmm. um so even just to break even on it uh, it doesn't take a lot, so mm-hmm. just just give it a go. Uh, what mm-hmm. we've got to do is do like three six months with it. What's that mm-hmm. going to? You know, it's not going to be a big investment. All you need is a couple of clients, and it will pay off. So just just get out there and get it get going, get it done. Excellent. Thanks, John. I really appreciate your time today. I uh, know it's a pleasure. Thank you.